Lesson 9, Part B, when we're looking at electrical meters. So, in this lesson, we're going to explain meter loading, which is the effect that a voltmeter has on a voltage circuit, and also in current measuring circuits in ammeters. We're going to be looking at the ammeter, the voltmeter, and voltmeter loadings, but we need to understand a little bit of the insides of each of those before we get there. So this is section 9.4, 9.5 and 9.6 in our textbook. So starting with the ammeter, an ammeter is connected in series with the circuit being monitored because the current has to flow through the meter. There's no other way to do it. We want to measure current flow and the only way to do that is to break the circuit and insert the meter in it. That's why an ammeter is always connected in series. Therefore it's important the ammeter has this low, low, low possible resistance so it doesn't reduce the circuit current. We don't want to add any extra resistance we can possibly avoid so we want to keep that resistance as low as possible. And analog and digital ammeters are very similar except for the way they actually display the reading. The reading is displayed differently but the way we actually get the analog value is almost identical. So here's a typical analog ammeter. So let me quickly just uh, turn on my pen and you'll notice here we've got the front view of the meter and you can kind of just see the meter movement hidden in here behind the plastic. The needle point, in this case our full scale deflection FSD is 10 amps. So it's a DC ammeter and its full scale deflection is 10 amps. It's graduated every two so we can then work out the ammeter reading. Side view shows us the terminals so I've got some terminals we can connect our wiring to but inside the meter there is this piece of resistance value in here a piece of resistance it looks like a, a big piece of heavy wire which is what it is but it's specially calibrated so it's called the shunt resistor you can see here the terminals and then coming off the terminals are the leads going to the meter itself you can see that the meter leads going in. So an analog ammeter is a meter movement in parallel with a low resistance value we call the shunt. Shunt is just another way of saying in parallel. Most of the circuit current flows in the shunt with a small amount flowing through the meter movement. So if I was to draw the circuit diagram just very quickly, we've got a very small resistance called the shunt and then we've got a very la much larger resistor. I'll just draw it longer to show it's much larger resistor. And that's the meter movement. So this is the meter movement and this is the shunt. So we want a large amount of current to go through here. But in proportion, we want a much smaller amount of current to go through there. So the relationship between here is very, very important. There is a direct proportional relationship. So lots of current through the shunt and just enough to make the meter do its job to then indicate how many amps are actually flowing in the shunt. So let's have a look at how that works. So here's an example we've done earlier, or prepared earlier, I should say. The full scale deflection is 50 milliamps. We've scaled it at 10, but the reality is the actual coil inside only takes 5 milliamps to get it all the way up here. That actually only takes 5 milliamps. If I was to try and push the whole 10 amps through it, I'm going to drive the meter way over here. I'm going to destroy the meter. In this particular case, the resistance, the internal resistance in the meter is 10 ohms, 10R. But we want the meter to read 10 amps, which is how we've got it scaled. So that scale is scaled at 10 amps. 
So let's look at the first example. We've got 10 amps coming in. We've got 5 amps going up through the meter itself, which will make the meter move all the way over here. And through the shunt, we've got 10 amps less the 5. So we've got a tiny I going in here, and we've got a huge I going through the shunt. That current then comes back out, joins to 10, less the 5, giving us back our full 10 as it comes back out here. So a bit of Kirchhoff's node theory in here and here. So as the current goes through this shunt resistor, it also develops a voltage. So at full scale, the meter movement takes 5 milliamps with the rest of the current, that is the 10 amps less the 5, flowing through the shunt resistor. But what if we only had 5 amps flowing through the circuit? So let me just change my pen colour, which might be helpful for, for this particular thing. Let's go to green. And let's say we had 5 amps. We're measuring 5 amps coming in through the circuit. So what we'd have is 2.5 milliamps going up through the meter. The shunt would be 5 amps minus the 2.5. Because remember the internal resistance of the meter hasn't changed. And then coming back out of the meter, we'd have our 2.5 again. But because we've only got 2.5 amps going through the meter, the meter would only dis deflect to halfway, would only deflect to here. And of course, that represents 5 amps, which is exactly what we want. So the shunt resistor, as its name implies, just means a resistor that's in parallel with the meter coil in here, remember this is just a meter coil, and in this particular case it was 10 ohms. So depending on how much current between 0 and 10 amps will depend on how much goes through the shunt, how much goes through the meter, and will vary the deflection of the needle, telling us how many amps is actually flowing. So here's an example calculate for the shunt. If you want to calculate the shunt value for this particular circuit, and I'll just put my pen color back. So full scale deflection, the voltage, is current multiplied by resistance. So we know that our meter has 5 milliamps to fully deflect it, and we want to deflect it to 10 amps. So we know that uh, 5 milliamps times 10 is going to give us 50 millivolts. I'm going to get 50 millivolts across the resistor. So our shunt resistance needs to be the full scale deflection divided by the current through the shunt. So our voltage full scale is the ammeter minus the FSD. So in our particular case, we're going to have 50 millivolts, which we got from up here. There's our full FSD voltage. We know we want to do 10 amps, and we know the meter current uses 5. So we simply take 10 and subtract 5 milliamps from it, and divide it into the 50 millivolts, giving us a resistive value. And in this particular case, it's going to be 5.0002 ohms to the minus 3, or we could have also said 5 milliohms. Same thing. So our shunt resistor needed to be 5 milliohms. So as long as we know what the current is it takes to deflect it, we can work, and we know the resistance of the meter, we can work out what a shunt value is that we would need across the meter. 
So let's now move to the digital multimeter being used as a digital ammeter. So it's a digital voltmeter module in parallel with a shunt resistor. So basically in the example here, and let me just turn my pen back on, here's our shunt. So again, we've just got our, probably something in the order of five milliohms in here, creating a voltage. So we're going to have something in circuit. We might have our 10 amps. And as our 10 amps goes through here, it's going to give us a voltage reading. And I'll explain why we need that in a moment. So it displays the voltage developed across the shunt resistor, which is proportional to current through the resistor, that's Ohm's law, and shows a value calibrated in amperes. The internal resistance is so high, many mega ohms, it's effectively infinite. So the internal resistance here of this electronic circuit here is very, very high. It's so high, in fact, we call it infinite ohms. So it doesn't make any difference to the parallel of the 0.5 milliohms of the shunt. So the two in parallel, infinity in parallel with 5 milliohms equals 5 milliohms. So the shunt itself is equal to the full scale deflection divided by the current range. Again, just Ohm's law. So how does a multi-range meter work? Well, the way a multi-range meter works is we simply just switch in different shunts. So in this first example, so example A, on the 20, got a two amp scale and a 20 amp scale, and you switch in the appropriate resistor. So in this particular case, if this one's 0.1 of an ohm, then this one's going to be 10 times smaller. So it's going to be 0.01 of an ohm. So as the amount of volts goes up, so the amount of current goes up, you want to switch in, your shunt has to be a bit smaller. Number two is the same thing, shunt just done a little bit. It's called an Atron shunt, probably because Mr. Atron thought of it or something. And here, you're just putting in both resistors offer as a shunt in the, twin, in the two amp position, but in the one amp position, then only one resistor operates in the shunt. So multi-range ammeters can vary and have as many ranges as you want or require, but you'll find in most digital meters, because the shunt resistors are actually quite large physically, their, their ohms value is small, but their, their size is physical because they have to carry a fair bit of current, you'll normally only find there's one or two of them. They don't want to put too many inside the casing. So you can have as many as you like, but with digital instruments you normally find there's only two current scales, and that's why. So we're now down to the voltmeter. A uh, voltage is either a voltage source, e.g. a battery, or a voltage drop across the component. So remember there are two voltage types that we need to be able to measure the voltage coming from the source or the voltage drop across a component. To measure the voltage, a voltmeter is connected in parallel with the voltage source or the component. So voltmeters, unlike ammeters, always connected in parallel. A voltmeter should have a high internal resistance so it doesn't affect the value of the voltage that it's measuring. That's very, very important. That's something electronic Digital multimeters are very good. Their internal resistances are so high, we call them infinite. 
a voltmeter can be analog or digital and here's an analog voltmeter so the previous one the ammeter the casing looks identical probably actually is identical so again we now have meter movement in here this one is scaled for 30 volts so our full scale deflection is 30 volts We've got terminals that give us access to the moving coil and you'll notice one wire goes straight to the meter movement but the second wire goes through a resistor and then connected to the meter movement. So this resistor is not called a shunt, it's called a multiplier. So we call it a multiplier. So when something's in series, so in this case we have the meter movement and then we have a resistor of a high value, would you believe? So our meter movement, it has low resistance and our multiplier has high resistance. So that's our multiplier and they're always in series. So a meter movement is used in a, in a voltmeter has a resistance in series with it called the multiplier. This resistor limits the current able to flow to the meter movement. So effectively the meter movement, even though it's designed to do measure current, effectively is only measuring some voltage drop across it and that's exactly what we want to do. We simply want to scale between them and again we're looking at the proportional relationship between the two voltages. So the voltage across the meter compared to the voltage across the resistor or the multiplier. So an analog voltmeter, here's the multiplier example. So here's the basic circuit. And we're measuring across our voltage here. So these are the input terminals. And if I put 30 volts across it, they're telling us that this meter, internals of this meter, one milliamp will cause it to go full scale deflection. Because remember our little coil in here, at the end of the day, it is current sensitive. So in this particular case, it's been built to go full scale deflection at one milliamp. So we need to put a multiplier in series to make sure that at 30 volts we don't get any more than 1 milliamp because this is 1 milliamp here. Halfway would be 0.5 of a milliamp and of course that would occur when we put 15 volts in here because we would get 0.5 of a milliamp rather than 1 milliamp and it would only deflect to halfway. So the value of the multiplier resistor depends on the maximum voltage to be displayed and the meter movement's full scale deflection or the FSD this time in current. In this example the multiplier resistor is 30k is needed to give full scale deflection at 30 volts because the meter is 1 milliamp. So Our R for our multiplier is simply Ohm's law. R multiplier equals volts divided by current. And we've got 30 volts divided by 1 milliamp. And you can punch in your calculator, but you should be able to do that in your head. And that comes out to 30,000 ohms. So not too hard to work out what the multiplier value needs to be. In this particular case the multiplier resistor is 30k ohms.
how do you range a multimeter? Well, ranging a multimeter is pretty easy because you can just switch in the resistances that you want. And you'll see on most multimeters, especially analog ones, they have three, four, sometimes five voltage ranges because it's very easy to do voltage ranges. So R1, the three volts, is going to be a smaller resistor than R3 at 300 volts. And it's going to be a hundred times smaller. The 30 volts is going to be again a times 10 relationship between the 3 volt scale and the 30 volt scale. So you'll notice 3, 30 and 10 so you need to then multiply this. So if you're on the 3 volt scale then this will equal 3 volts. If you're on the 30 volt scale then it'll equal 30 volts. And if you're on the 300 volt scale, the top of the scale would be 300. So on here, at this position, you're going to divide the scale by 10. On here, you're going to multiply the scale by 1. And on this one, you're going to multiply the scale by 10. So that's how you do different scales on a multi-range analog voltmeter. Now similarly on a digital multimeter, multimeter, very very similar. All we do is put a whole heap of resistors in series with each other and tap off the, the appropriate voltages. So in this particular case the full range of the analog to digital converter is 200 millivolts. So our analog to digital converter it's capable of those 4,000 steps, if you remember. I'll just get my pen on. So we've still got 4,000 in here, for example. And that's represented by 0 to 200 millivolts. So as the voltage comes in here, this network here is called a voltage divider network. So it's called a big voltage divider. Voltage divider. And at the top end, you can see we're not doing any voltage divide. The signal is going straight in at 200 millivolts. If we tap down to 2 volts, then we're looking at the voltage across here. If we tap down to 20 volts, we're looking at the voltage across two resistors. If we're tapping down to the 20 volts, we're looking at the voltage across three. And finally, if we tap down to the 200, we're looking at the voltage across the entire network. So a digital voltmeter has a potential divider or a voltage divider it's called connected between the measured voltage and the digital module and that analog value in volts just gets turned into counts and displays in whatever you would like to display on the digital meter which does the scaling. Voltmeter loading is an important thing, but it only really applies to analog meters. The ideal voltmeter should have an infinitely high resistance and therefore take no current from the circuit. It is measuring with digital ones, that's true, but with analog ones, unfortunately, it's not true. All voltmeters have some resistance. If this resistance value is similar to the resistances in the circuit that it's connected to, then the voltmeter will affect the circuit. So I'll just do a, again a little quick example for you. If I have a circuit and I have a 100 K ohm resistor in here and I connect a voltmeter across it Here's my voltmeter. 
and say the internal resistance of the voltmeter itself is 100k so it's a 100k ohms itself which is quite possible all of a sudden I've got 100k in parallel with 100k so the overall resistance is half 50k ohms so all of a sudden the meter is going to affect the reading because half the current is going to go through the resistor in the circuit the other half the current is going to go through the meter so we're going to end up with half I through there and half I through here and that's no good because you're going to get a wrong voltage meter reading this has to be so high that it almost has no impact on the resistance in the circuit that is the voltmeter has loaded the circuit and affected the readings so effects of a voltmeter so here's a little example very similar to the one that I just gave you here we've got 10 volts across our two resistors one resistor at 10k one resistor at 20k so connecting a 20k multimeter so the multimeter itself has an internal resistance so the internal resistance in here of the meter and we're going to have a drop in resistance because we're effectively adding another resistor in parallel across here and that's going to vary the currents which is going to vary the voltage drops and therefore vary the measurement so the meter in this particular case shows about 2.5 volts but really it should be showing about 3.3 volts so if you remember your Kirchhoff's voltage laws if I've got 20k and 10k with 10 volts across it then I'm going to have 3.3 volts across here and I'm going to have 6 0.6 volts across here but my meter is not measuring correctly because I've added another 10k of internal resistance in my meter so my meter has loaded the circuit it's called so we have to be very careful when using analog voltmeters that the voltmeter itself is not interfering with the original circuit and we can uh, get around some of the issues of meters using different what we call shunt methods so there's the long shunt and the short shunt meter connections so measuring the current in a load while also measuring the voltage across the load requires connecting an ammeter and a voltmeter in the circuit to obtain the highest accuracy it's important that the voltmeter is connected to the, the current it takes from the circuit and does not affect the value read by the ammeter so you can see here for example we've got an ammeter and a voltmeter in the circuit and I've got the voltmeter connected directly across the resistor so I'm getting the, the correct value the voltmeter current is large enough compared to the load current to cause the ammeter to show a 10% error so in this particular case again I'm adding some more resistance in across here because of my meter my meter has internal resistance that internal resistance means I'm pulling more current than should be being pulled 
because some of it's going through my meter. So I end up with an error on my ammeter. So what can we do about that? Well, it's quite easy. We just measure the voltage over here. So at the moment, this is connected in what we call short shunt because it's the shortest path across the voltage. We could actually move the meter lead over to here and measure the voltage. Remembering that the resistance in here is very, very small. It would make almost no difference. So putting the meter in long shunt would give us far more accurate readings. So on this first example, which was the kind we had on the previous slide, this is the short shunt used with high current loads. And the long shunt connection is used with small current loads. So if your load has small current and the voltmeter is likely to affect what's going on, then measure the voltage using long shunt compared to short shunt. So your normal reaction is to go straight across the component, but if you're measuring large currents, that's fine. If you're measuring short currents, then you want to go the long shunt. So that brings us to the end of DC Lesson 9, Part B. That's the end. So remember, voltmeters and meters, analog voltmeters and ammeters, do interfere in the actual circuit itself, and you have to be aware of how that happens.